Now it's fairly well known that the bike itself comes with pretty soft suspension and set up for a really light rider going at slow speeds. Now once you get this bike going a little bit quicker, you're up in a fourth gear, fifth gear, you're ripping down some roads and you come to stuff with some potholes, you're gonna end up bottoming out the suspension and that's why we're gonna be swapping over to the BBR heavy duty stuff. Now that we got the 170 kit in it and all the other upgrades, we're gonna be going a lot faster and we're gonna need that suspension to be able to take up those hits. So as I've shown you guys before, here we have our BBR fork springs and here we have our BBR rear spring. So here we got our BBR upgrades. Let's go ahead and let's start taking the bike apart and get them fitted inside. Now swapping out the fork springs and the rear shock is pretty easy. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have to start by removing this handlebar pad and the handlebar bolts to be able to get the handlebars up and out of the way so we can get access to the bolt and we have room to be able to pull the spring up and out of the front fork. All right, you guys can see we got the handlebars all pulled off and now we have nice big clear access right to these top bolts. Now we're going ahead, let's crack these guys loose and let's show you the procedure of what's next. All right, so after you crack these guys loose with a 22 mil here you're gonna need something that's a little bit of a hook so I just got a coat hanger with a hook on the end of it I'm gonna finish taking these up and out okay this cap comes off this is where we're gonna need our little hook so we're gonna, we're gonna stick the hook down inside I'm gonna pull this big tube up take that set that to the side and go back down in here we're gonna do some more fishing I'm gonna start pulling up now make sure your bike is on a jack stand here okay now there's gonna be a washer on the God damn it. Well, we got the washer. The washer sits on top of the spring. It's like so. I'm gonna reach back in there. Just like that. Oh, God dang it. I'm gonna reach back in there. Just like that. There's your stock fork spring. Now we're gonna try and let this sit and kind of drain the rest of the fluid that it has on it. So here you guys can see we got our new BBR springs are the shorter ones and these are the factory ones as well as we got the new stanchion tubes that are a little bit longer to compensate for the spring difference in length. Now how does this actually all perform out in the trails? I don't know, that's something we're gonna have to find out in the future. So let's go ahead and let's stick our new BBR fork springs inside the bike and show you how to do that. So now what we're gonna do is take our new fork springs, I'm gonna slide those down, just like so. Boom goes that. Then we're gonna take our washer and we're gonna sit that down in there. Got to move that around. Make sure that guy sits down in there flat. Just like so. Now we got that sitting down in there flush. Then we're gonna take our new stanchion tube. I'm gonna slide that down on the top of there, just like so. And that's all there is to it. So now let's go ahead and stick the bolt back on. We'll stick our nut back in the top here. And uh, now this will let us try out the new BBR suspension. Now you could if you want to, this would be when you change out your uh, fork oil if you want to change out and do something heavier weight. But for right now, we're gonna stick with the stock 10 weight oil and we're gonna see how that is. And if we want to, we can always upgrade. We got some 15 weight oil over on the bench. We could swap it and try that out instead. So now all we gotta do is just go ahead and tighten these nuts up. It's a super easy job. Anyone could definitely do these fork springs at home, especially on these old style conventional non-inverted forks. They're super easy to work on. And just like that, you got your BBR fork springs installed. So let's go ahead and let's swap in the rear spring. You got one bolt here at the top of the shock, and then you're gonna have one down here. All right, so I got the two bolts out of the shock, but turns out you gotta pull quite a few more things off. So you can see we got the top shock bolt out, the rear one's dropped out as well, but it turns out to be actually able to get it out, you have to remove the air box and the battery to be able to get the shock up and out of the back end of the bike. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna stick you guys up on time lapse. Let's go. Okay, we finally got it out. That was a, kind of a pain in the butt, if I'm not gonna lie. That took me about 10 minutes real life time of just snaggling and jiggling around. It wasn't, wasn't too bad, but that was kind of annoying. Definitely not as fun as I thought it was gonna be to do. But as you can see, you gotta take out your air box, your rear mud flap, the cover, the intake boot, the battery. And yeah, you gotta take out a bunch of stuff, but nonetheless. Now we finally got the shock up on the bench and we can go ahead and start swapping on the new spring. Now this new spring is a lot stiffer than factory and should give us nice stiffness. All right, as you guys can see, we got the shock mounted upside down. So this is the top. We got that in the vise so it can't turn. So we need to separate these collars and get this bottom one. Now you definitely want the right type of wrenches, but I don't have them. So this is what I've used is we got a set of two pairs of channel locks and you set one on the top ring and one on the bottom ring and you spin it loose. So you want to spin it this way so it goes down and then we can take the shock and loosen the parts up here and slide the shock up and off. So let's go ahead and let's time lapse taking this apart. All right.
right, and just like that, we got our spring off, and now we can go ahead and we're gonna get the other one, our BBR, nice and beautiful red. And to get it so it matches, we're gonna make sure the lettering is upside down. So let's go ahead and you're gonna slide this back on. And we're gonna do this process in reverse. We're gonna do the same thing we just did, but in reverse, we're gonna pick this collar to the top and take the other one here, I'm gonna slide it in. It's like so, I'm gonna take the rubber bump stop, shove it back to the top, and then that's how our shock's gonna sit. So now we're gonna spin our collar, we're gonna bring it all the way back to the top. Go ahead and we'll take this collar, get the thread started on that. Wow, beautiful, beautiful piece right here. All right, so now we got our new shock on, we just gotta tighten these collars up and we can start putting it back in the bike. All right, now that we got the shock all done, we can, oh, I see what I done messed up. Okay, fixed. You just have to make sure you get uh, this lined up with this so you guys can see it's a little bit not perfectly straight. Like they're straight and up here, this needs to be right down here. So we're just gonna grab these and we're just gonna twist them. Now it's nice and straight up and down. So go ahead and we should be able to slide this back down in its hole, down into the depths below. If we've done this right, we should be able to mount these bolts up and get those situated and then start putting this air box back in appropriately. Should be able to grab our handy dandy drill. Just carefully do this. This is a hard one to get lined up in here. Because I think actually we put the bolt in the wrong side. We totally put the bolt in the wrong side. The more you know, it's only threaded on the one side. We did it backwards. Thought it kind of looked funny. This guy. Boom. Let's go, boys. You just gotta put your air box back in, bolt that up, put your battery back in, bolt that up, bolt the bottom of the shock up, put all your air boots back in, and we're good to go. Now there's one last thing you don't wanna to forget to do once we're done putting it all back in. You wanna come back here and set your dampening back to neutral. Right now it's adjusted extra stiff for the original shock soft shock. So we need to make sure we go back and set that to neutral position so we can see what the shock really feels. So we can see what the spring really feels like without the adjusted dampening and then we can adjust it from there. So hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and me showing you how to install BBR suspension in your KLX 140. Hope you guys are excited for the next video. You guys aren't gonna miss out so make sure you guys click subscribe, click like for more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.